Hi everyone and welcome to our lesson on transducers in which we look at example questions involving thermistors specifically. First of all, the definition of a transducer, just to go over that again from the theory lesson, a transducer is a semiconducting uh, device, so a device that we, we can use in a circuit which changes one type of energy into another. So it might uh, even change you know, electrical energy into sound energy, that would be a speaker. But in this case, it's going to be changing heat energy, which is the therm part of the word thermistor, so heat energy, into electrical energy. And what that uh, basically means is that you have a type of resistor, a thermistor. It sounds like a resistor, it does act like one. But a normal resistor has a constant resistance. A thermistor has a variable resistance. So the resistance of a thermistor changes and it changes depending on heat. Some thermistors are known as positive, uh, what is it, positive, uh, yeah, positive temperature coefficients. They have positive temperature coefficients. That means as the temperature rises, as they get hotter, the resistance goes up. So a hot thermistor with a positive temperature coefficient has more resistance than if it were cooled down. But you can also get negative temperature coefficient thermistors. And negative temperature uh, coefficient thermistors, as they get hotter, the resistance goes down. And recapping, once again, a thermistor is a type of transducer because it's turning that heat energy into some kind of electrical energy. The thermistor I have pictured in this circuit here, I've labeled thermistor A. And thermistor A's behavior is shown here. Ignore this graph for now because that's thermistor B, which we'll be looking at in a second. But thermistor A specifically has different resistances, measured in ohms, at different temperatures. So we said before a positive temperature coefficient thermistor, as it gets hotter, the resistance goes up. But a negative temperature coefficient thermistor, as it gets hotter, the resistance goes down. Think for yourself quickly whether this is a positive or negative temperature coefficient thermistor. It is, of course, a negative temperature uh, coefficient thermistor because as the temperature goes up, see it's going up as we go down the graph, the resistance actually goes down. So it's got a high resistance at a low temperature and a low resistance at a high temperature. This is useful. It can be used as a sensor in an environment because the heat tends to come from the air around the thermistor or perhaps direct sunlight. What it basically means is that say you were operating a circuit in the afternoon. As that afternoon moved into dusk, which moved into night, the temperature you would expect to go down. And so you're going to have more resistance across that uh, thermistor, and therefore more voltage across it. This is the basis of the questions you are asked about thermistors. The question I'm going to ask here is that, if we put a V out, or a voltmeter here, across this resistor here. And we had a little device here that said when the voltage goes above 10, the circuit switches off. This would be useful if you were trying to, say, heat a house. Because if you didn't have something that would switch off the circuit that was heating the house, the house would get hotter and hotter and hotter and your heater would just be you know, exhausted of fuel after a while. But if we use the properties of a thermistor to say that once a certain temperature is reached, a certain voltage is put across this uh, resistor here, we can have a circuit that operates up until a certain temperature, then it will switch off. So the operation of this circuit is defined by this device here and it says when V out is above 10 volts this uh, whole circuit shuts off 
circuit shuts off. And the question is, at what temperature? does it shut off. So we know that when more than 10 volts is over this resistor it shuts off, so at what te at temperature does it shut off? Going off this information here. Let's use just general sense for a second. These t this resistor and this thermistor, so basically two resistors, are in series. If this thermistor had a heck of a lot of resistance, if resistance was very high for this thermistor, the amount of voltage across this thermistor will also be great. And there's one thing I haven't said, it's that this is a 20 volt battery over here. So going back to what I said then, if the resistance of this thermistor is high, the voltage is also high. That means that if the resistance of this thermistor were much higher than this resistor here, we might get 19 volts here, and therefore we've only got one volt left to go over this resistor because the total voltage of these two devices has to be 20. But as the temperature goes up, so temperature goes up, the resistance of this resistor, see temperature going up as I go down, and the resistance is going down. So the resistance starts to go down and therefore fewer volts are on this thermistor here and more volts here. So if the voltage here becomes 10 volts, all of a sudden there are 10 volts left on this resistor here. So it should be clear to you that the amount of voltage across this resistor here is entirely dependent on the amount of voltage across this thermistor or the amount of volts that this thermistor is stealing from the circuit. We have to use our V out equals V in times R over RT equation to solve this question. Basically what we're saying is that as temperature is going up the amount of voltage on this thermistor is dropping and when it drops below 10 volts here there will be more than 10 volts here which will switch off the circuit. So we can say that the amount of voltage across this section at the critical moment where it switches off is 10 volts. And now we use this equation, V out equals 10, going off this uh, thermistor here, is equal to V in, that's 20, times the resistance here, which is right now a mystery, so we're at a certain resistance, over the total resistance, which is the mystery resistance, we'll say R th, R thermistor, plus 2 ohms. We can divide both sides by 20, so we're trying to find RTH, the thermistor resistance, because that'll lead us on to the temperature at which it shuts off. So 10 divided by 20 equals RTH over RTH plus 2. Now we have, if we put both sides to the power of negative 1, this instead of being a half becomes 2 equals R TH plus 2 on R TH, so flipping both sides over. Splitting up this fraction, we get 2 equals R TH over R TH, doing this quite slowly, plus 2 over R TH, that's 2, take away, no, I say 2 equals 1 plus 2 on R TH take one from both sides, one equals two on RTH, RTH must equal two ohms. So we said before when the temperature is going up, the resistance is going down therefore the voltage is going down. When the resistance of this thermistor goes below two ohms, that is when the circuit switches off. And you can see up here, the resistance goes below 2 ohms when the temperature goes above 30. So at what temperature does this heater shut off? T is equal to 30 degrees 
Celsius, putting the units in there. And if the temperature were to keep going up, say to reach 40 degrees, then the resistance here would actually be even lower and we'd get much more, uh, much less than 10 volts here. So we might get, you know, seven volts and we'd have 13 volts over here. So that is proof that if you kept heating the room, this would always switch off because the voltage is just getting higher and higher. It doesn't stay at 10. Look to the next video to see, uh, instead of being in this form where it's discrete resistances and temperatures, in the next video we'll deal with a graph involving a continuous line of resistances, which is a little trickier, but using the same concepts.